Hello everyone. So this week we're going to be talking about user experience design. Um, and this is really when we start to get into kind of how do you actually build a website or an app or uh, whatever you happen to be putting together. And user experience is really about developing, as you might expect, the experience of the user, like how they're going to work through that content, how they're going to engage with what you have to show. We're not really going to talk much about um, uh, design itself, right? Like the actual aesthetic appeal. Uh, we will highlight that, but that will mainly be discussed uh, next time in this uh, talk, uh, in the next lecture that we talk about. Um, so the point of a good user experience is to create happy customers, right? At minimum, right, a website, app, etc., needs to be reliable, functional, and convenient, right? So that people can go to it, get the same experience all the time. But to truly be great, it needs to be enjoyable to use and an experience that the customer finds worth sharing with other users, right? Um, it needs to be findable, you know, you need to be able to find it through um, whatever medium you're using, whether that be an app store or a search engine. It needs to be accessible. Once you get there, you need to be able to access the content you want. You need to be desirable. There needs to be something that draws the customer back to that website. Uh, it has to be usable. You have to be able to accomplish the goals uh, you want to accomplish. Uh, and it has to be credible and useful as well, right? They need to believe that they're going to deliver what's going on. One example of like an, of, of a class example of good UX design is the register versus continue button that we talked about earlier, right? Uh, so this was uh, from, uh, we think it's from a Best Buy example, we don't know for sure. Uh, but uh, you know, when they changed the button that used to say register uh, when you were trying to make a purchase to uh, continue. And once they did that, there was a huge difference in um, the amount of purchases that people made because they found it a much more enjoyable experience, right? So it highlighted things like usability, desirability, um, over uh, things like trying to keep track of the data and, thing, and other aspects that was the reason why they had the register button there before. Really, you, good user experience is about developing good user-centric design, right? Uh, so one thing to think about is as you're doing it is try and think through a persona of what the person that you're designing for is like, right? Uh, so we have maybe some uh, business people here, right? That could be one example of a persona. It could be for a, um, a stay-at-home mom. It could be for a um, uh, you know a, a, a 18 to 29 year old. Uh, who's trying to go out on a town and looking for a good restaurant, right? Whatever the, the user is, try and keep that in mind, right? So who is that user? Identifying that persona can help you think as they would. And then you can start to imagine things like what are the user's wants and needs from your platform? For example, most people visiting uh, restaurant websites want hours, menu, and location, right? That should be something that's very salient and very obvious on uh, the website. Um, and then you need to think about why the user is really coming to the website, right? Are they coming because of your product or service or do they need general knowledge, right? Are they coming because they saw some sort of brand mention of you and they really want to explore it in more detail or do they have a very specific question that they're trying to answer, right? Once you know that, you can think a little bit better about how you might design uh, the website to best suit their needs. Of course, you also should take into account their capabilities and skills. Uh, for instance, if you're targeting an older generation of users, right, hiding all your drop downs behind that three bar menu icon that most of us know presently we can push to get the, all the menu options, it's not necessarily a good idea, right? Making it more obvious, like pushing the word menu or something like that might be a preferable option. So taking that into account can help create a better user experience for uh, the user or the customer, right? Finally, um, you need to think about what you experience, things you might add, add to make the experience even better and what things you might take away for that matter, right? Um, a kind of a classic example here is trying to add more navigational guides. A lot of times companies think that they make it very obvious where the user should click on next to go forward and uh, they only have it in one place or in one location and maybe it's a small link. But in reality, it's often very difficult. And, and honestly, you, you have to remember the vast majority of users are not going to carefully study your web page. They're going to scan it for the content they want and then click forward to the next link that they want. And so you need to make sure that you have navigational guides in place to make it obvious where they should be clicking. This often means you incorporate redundancy into the website, which is perfectly okay in this context, um, as long as it's not um, over cluttering the overall design. So usability, 
there's a lot of popular conventions that almost every site should follow or should justify in breaking, right? Um, it used to be that links were always blue, and now they kind of have uh, taken on different colors, usually characteristic of the particular website. In fact, in the example I'm just about to show you, right, the links are actually red instead, but that's for a reason. Um, and they're usually underlined to make it obvious where they are. Navigation menus are almost always at the top or the left of the page to make them clear where they are. So you might have a sidebar down the left or you have them across the top, right? The logo is almost always in the top left-hand corner. The logo always links back to the homepage, giving the uh, user kind of a safe exit from the page wherever they are. And there's almost always in the upper right corner a search box, um, and it should use either the standard wording of search or have a magnifying glass icon to indicate that it's there. Now, there are some things you should not do that make the sites less usable, right? Resizing the windows automatically uh, upon launch of the website, launching the site itself in a pop-up, uh, using loading pages that just sit there and say, loading, 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 right? They don't really make the site more usable in any way. Um, you should not put all the content in a non-searchable format, such as Flash, because that makes the website less accessible and less findable from a user standpoint. Uh, and you should not distract your users with blinking text, millions of animations, et cetera, et cetera, right? Try to concentrate on the message at hand. One website I think that follows a lot of these examples is, of course, the standard uh, Jenkins uh, and the Jenkins MBA website, right? And so you have your um, search bar up here. You have your menu bar, both in the little classic three icon, three bars icon, but then also across the top, right? Um, and uh, links are underlined uh, when they're not completely obvious. And in this case, as I mentioned, they're in red, not blue. Um, that's to match the kind of style guidelines of the NC State websites in general. And we'll talk about those style guidelines uh, in a different talk, right? Uh, but as you can see, overall, the design is pretty clean and simplistic and very easy to find, right? And this is opposed to what you know uh, some people think should be on a website, right? If you if you go to the vast majority, and now this I must admit this is for the Jenkins MBA. It's a very specific piece of content, but if you look in general at um, the content that's available on the front page of most university websites, they have some sort of big fan photo slideshow like the one we have. They have the alumni in the news, promotion events, right? Um, and but what people are actually looking for is like who are the faculty, right? What's the campus address? How do I fill out some forms? Right? What courses are available? Uh, and the only thing that overlaps in this diagram, or at least according to this comic from XKCD, is the full name of the school, right? Uh, now, I think that the, the Jenkins website actually does a good job of trying to provide you pointers to where you're going to find that additional information right away. Uh, but it's something you really need to keep in mind. And I like this as a great example of you know, what people are looking for and what the, what the university wants to put on that page, right? And they're not necessarily, or the organization wants to put on the page. And they're not necessarily overlapping, but they should be, right? And if nothing else, you could have the stuff you want to put out there as a brand, it kind of to create brand buzz, to create more impressions. Uh, while at the same time making it obvious where that other content might be fine. Okay.